Dave, we're approaching 20 years since Oasis um, brought out their first album. Yeah. Does that make you feel old, first of all? Um, when you say 20 years, yeah. It was such a big impact on like people of my age and around my age life, yeah. It's, it doesn't really make me feel old. It's made, I'm proud to have been there, to be honest, when it got released. On the back of that, you're obviously really into your music, as we all know. Yeah. Um, here at Scotland, we do do things a little bit differently yeah. compared to other football grounds. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have an Oasis-themed music day um, when we host York City. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, what we're going to do is, it's 20 years since it's brought out, definitely maybe. Oasis brought out seven studio albums. Um, we're celebrating the fact that it is 20 years since they released such a landmark album. Uh, and what we're going to do, as we did with the Beatles Day last year, is we're going to ask fans to um, tweet in their favourite Oasis song. It can be off any of the seven albums, and the ones that get the most votes will play on the York City match at the beginning of April. The Beatles Day was quite good fun, wasn't it? Um, it was, yeah. People responded very well to that. They, tweeted us, they obviously emailed us in their song choice and you had a great lot of fun as well actually playing the rest It was, it was brilliant, I mean the Beatles again were one of the biggest things to ever happen, the Beatles and it was, we did it, it was 50 years since they released the first single and um, it was really good, the amount of response we got for it was brilliant and not only that, we got loads of publicity for the club, no other clubs were doing it, uh, we got loads of publicity for it, it was a great day, people were talking about it, uh, away fans came to that match because they knew it was happening uh, and hopefully it would be the same again with the Oasis day. Every time a team comes here, we receive lots and lots of tweets, yeah. either from the club's media or supporters who are over in the away stand, tweeting saying how good our music is here. Do you realise how good it is and why why we get that praise? I'm, I'm lucky, I'm, I'm honoured to be able to work at Rochdale Football Club, play music I love at Rochdale Football Club and get such a good response. Uh, I don't know why other clubs haven't cottoned on really, because I know you go to away grounds and they play in general chart music really and we do do it a little bit different here and even though it's probably not everybody's cup of tea it is so different and, and we get a lot of respect and we got a lot of um, we get a lot of praise for it as you just mentioned and it's good for it's good for me and it's good for the club and it's also i feel it makes a better match day experience for for the fans going back to definitely maybe you mentioned you were proud to be around when that was released why definitely maybe as far as i'm concerned is probably one of um the most important albums ever. Definitely maybe came out and it, it changed. It didn't just change music, it changed uh, people's views, it changed how people acted, it, it affected politics. It was, they came out and I mean, after the late 80s, after the Manchester scene, um, there was a few years where the band scene went a little bit quiet and we had a, a brilliant period of dance music. And then in 1993, 94, the Britpop era came about. Um, which again was brilliant, we had some amazing bands come out of the Britpop era uh, but Oasis came, five lads from down the road and just took it all to a different level and the album they brought out, definitely maybe, it, it changed people's lives, it shaped people's lives and it changed people's lives and to this day it's still, I don't think there's a more important debut album than that ever, it's just such a great album and I mean even to this day it don't matter who you are, what situation you're in, what mood you're in, it takes you to a different world when you listen to that album. Uh, and it's brilliant. I still DJ in clubs most nights of the week and as soon as you put any, any anthems off that rock and roll style, live forever, slide away, everyone just stops and pays attention to it and whatever's going on in the world, it takes you to a different place, it don't matter. And I think it's important that as music fans and as a club that is known for its music, we celebrate that. I've already mentioned that we'll be re-releasing this album sort of later in the year. Can you see Oasis getting back together or is it too soon? <laughs> Everyone asked me that. Um, I personally, as a fan, if they got back together I'd be the first one there. Uh, I think it's too soon because it isn't that long since they split up. I didn't give it another, maybe another five years for the 25th anniversary. I think it'd be amazing. Right now, even though like I say, I'd be the first one buying tickets if they did. As a fan, I think it's a little bit too soon. I think give it another five years or so and then hopefully they'll get back together, but they're both making brilliant music in their own as BDI and as the iFlying Birds, so I'd love them to get back together. But for, for now, I think it's great that they're concentrating on bringing out Definitely Maybe again. It's 20 years in August since it got released, and they re-release it in May to celebrate the facts. Are you a fan of High Flying Birds and BDI? Yeah, I yeah. love them, yeah, definitely, yeah. It's not Oasis, but I mean, you look at Noel Gallagher, and I think he's probably the most prolific and important songwriter since 
probably since Lennon and McCartney. I, the only other person I'd probably compare him to would probably be Paul Weller in the way that he wrote so many anthems that mattered to people, really. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of both them bands, but Oasis is a band that, you know, changed people's lives, as I said.